Thank you very much <laughs> for the shuffling across. Um, well, it gives me great pleasure to be here introducing Cinever Martre to you to lead this keynote. Sinova has been a teacher and a researcher at the Norwegian University of Science and Technology since 1990, following 10 years teaching in Norwegian schools. Her research interests are in the field of language and learning, particularly in children's language and text development, conversation analysis and writing assessment research. Her particular contribution to the field has been in relation to the teaching of writing. Sonova was the project director for a national project developing national standards for the teaching and assessment of writing, which led to the Norms Project, a major interdisciplinary project with a budget of 20 million Norwegian kroner, developing national standards for the assessment of writing. And Sonova is going to be presenting about that project today. Sinova's research has always been at the intersection of research, policy and practice. She established the National Writing Centre and was chair of the board at the National Centre for Reading Education and Research. Sinova's keynote today addresses the role of writing in education. Sinova, thank you. Yeah, you do, you do. <laughs> thank you, Deborah, for the introduction, and thank you also to the committee um, that gave me the honor of giving a keynote here. I'm going to talk about how to meet challenges in writing education uh, based on experiences from an interdisciplinary research project on writing and assessment that Deborah talked a little bit about. Uh, as you see, I have added a co-author to this um, keynote, and uh, it's Randy Solheim. We have cooperated so much during this project, uh, sh and she has also responded on uh, what I'm going to say today, so I just wanted to have her with me, in a way. So, And also, um, I'm very grateful for the rest, uh, to the rest of my eminent uh, research group that you see here. Writing plays an important part in schools today, in all subjects and at all levels. Researchers and teachers, however, point to unexploited potential among students when it comes to the proficiency. The overarching aim of this presentation is to reflect on what it takes to develop competent students, writers, and professional writing teachers for the present and the future. Excuse me, is, is the sound okay? Okay, that's good. I, I hear kind of delay here. But anyway, this is the aim. And um, this presentation will draw on findings and experiences from this large project, which is a mixed method project uh, in primary school in Norway. The plan for the presentation is to present the summing up of the norm project. Experiences from the study will be used for discussing premises for successful writing education. And as a closing comment, I present some critical perspectives on writing and assessment research, pointing to methodological cha challenges in carrying out intervention studies. The main part of my talk will be on describing and reporting from the project, dwelling uh, with the theoretical and methodological underpinning, um, integrating experiences to give you an impression of the complexity of it, and also as a basis for suggesting possible future ways to go. Just to remind you, what can we do with writing? What kind of potential does writing have? 
Historically, mainly, it was used to state ownership, to store knowledge and to inform about important things. Today it has become an essential tool in learning, in making meaning in all subjects, in communication, accelerating today due to all the new medias, but in participation, in taking care in social context and ensuring democracy, in building cultures and not at least in developing identity both for children and grown-ups. It is in fact a tool with great potential. And pointing to the future with new medias, new semiotic and multimodal possibilities, it is really difficult to foresee what writing in the future might look like and thus to prepare teachers and students how to meet future demands and challenges. Uh, and this perspective I want us to have with us further in my talk. The NORM project, that is the short name of our project, the long name is Developing National Standards for the Assessment of Writing, a Tool for Teaching and Learning. We have, we have closed it in a way, we don't have money any longer, but we can research for as long as we want to, we have much material. The background for it was that in our curriculum, writing is presented as a key competency to use in all subjects, on the specific subject's premises. Our experience, however, was that writing is difficult to implement in school subjects and difficult to assess. We saw a conflict between intended and realized curriculum. Through the NORM project, we wished to contribute to a better integration of writing education in all subjects and form basis for valid assessment through developing a shared understanding of writing shared language and concepts, and shared expectations, and try to meet real needs in school. This study was designed as what we have called a dialogical intervention, involving teachers to a large degree. Running for a period of two years and focusing on writing um, among third and seventh graders, or from third to seventh grade, and their teachers. The intervention was based on a functional construct of writing and explicit norms of expectations and aimed at discovering possible effects of writing education guided by these resources. As I present more details from the project, I will bring along, along with me the voices of teachers and students in the project. The project is founded on uh, three premises, a functional writing construct, assessment, and explicit expectations. Basic questions in a functional view of writing is, why do we write? Which acts may we carry out through writing? And how do we express our intentions in writing? These questions are incorporated in the construct, the wheel of writing, which illustrate the relations between purposes that you see in the middle circle, writing acts and written mediation. And there is a dynamic interaction between these three dimensions. Uh, we have experienced that this functional view of writing appeals to the students. They see that they are able to achieve something through writing. Writing is useful for them. And like this fourth grader said, it's cool to write. Um, it's pretty cool to write, he says. Now I have learned to write an application. I may use this knowledge when I grow older and get a job. The NORM project deals with writing in all subjects, and here is an excerpt from a student conversation on mathematical text, where the prompt was to present how to figure out volume. I did not understand those volume things in the beginning, but when you write, you have to go so close into what volume is, and when you are going to explain it, then you have to know it a little bit yourself. You have to enter into the task in another way, this student says. The 
This is the wheel of writing in a more elaborated version, showing different acts of writing in the outer circle and purposes in the middle circle. Here we see it in a default position, but the circles can be moved uh, around to make different combinations. And there is another uh, version of the circle also opening the nave, the semiotic mediation, showing the rich diversity of semiotic tools that may be used in writing. Assessment may have a strong effect on learning. At the same time, assessment of writing is difficult, both what and how to assess and not at least when. An important question uh, is, what is the assessment going to be used for? There are two different lines, uh, we could say, in the research. Assessment for measurement and formative assessment or assessment for learning. We focus mainly on the last one, but elements of measuring is included as a basis for formative assessment. A basic principle in our project is that we see assessment as an integrated part of writing education. We have sought support in Hattie and Timperley, and there are three questions. Relative, relevant formative assessment is going um, to make the student able to answer where am I heading, how well am I doing, and how may I work to improve. The project is further based on a belief that um, clear or explicit expectations to the students' text may help teachers in their writing instruction and help students in their writing. Such uh, expectations may be something to assess against for the teachers. And here is a quote uh, from one of our teachers in the early phase of the project saying that, but I think it's very all right to know what I'm going to look for, be able to assess different parts of the text and not just say, yeah, this is a good text, so and so. And also um, something to strive after for the student. And here is a quote uh, from uh, a teacher at uh, the summing up at the end of the project. The students have become more conscious and more clever in <coughs> assessing their own and other texts. On the basis of this, we designed a project focusing on writing and assessment in primary school, which has as its aim to develop knowledge on what it is reasonable to expect of writing competence after four and seven years of education. And we ask what effect use of shared norms of expectations in writing education and assessment work may have on the development of writing competency among children and assessing practice among teachers. This project is both a research and a professional or school development project. It's research for and with teachers. The project builds on an ecological perspective. Um, this is expressed through the functional view of writing that we just have been talking about. It is also expressed through our methodological choices. To do research on school and classroom requires that we relate to the complexity that we find there. True enough, we have to reduce the complexity in all studies, but some does it more than others. When we were to examine activities going on in school, we had a wish to relate as strongly as possible to what school is, to the complexity in the everyday school life. This is exactly what validity deals with, whether we actually study what we are supposed to study. We seek support in what we call ecological validity, an alternative term to uh, in intern or ex and external validity, where our point of departure is the dynamic school situation where the participants are constantly moving and developing. 
The concept ecolog ecological validity is based on the principle that a phenomenon which deals with human discourses and learning cannot be understood good enough without the relations between uh, them being well represented in the research design. This approach makes it difficult to have control over all variables actually impossible. At the same time, it contributes to the project as a whole, both as a research and school development project. Um, the project has, by a very good colleague of us, Ellen Krog, been characterized as uh, a, a kind of wild research, very ambitious, and I also agree with her, but sometimes you have to do this kind of research to, to try to push borders, to supplement insights from more limited focused research, and to secure that we don't lose this, the entirety of writing out of sight. But of course, it has its limited and challenges. Uryo Engström anchors his research in this way of thinking when he says that interventions in human beings' activities should be met with actors with identities and agencies, not with anonymous mechanical responses. If agency is not the central concern in the methodology, there is something seriously wrong with it, he says. This quote uh, supports our thinking. The theoretical basis uh, presented um, so far gives guidelines for the design let me see this, for the design of the intervention. We have tentatively called it dialogic. It's an intervention. It could also have other labels, but that's where we are now. An intervention different, it's an intervention different from alternative intervention concepts like interventions defined as constructs based on clear and limited design principles and explicit learning activities based understood as cognitive processes. It's also different from Engström's concept formative uh, interventions comprising these um, uh, large uh, collective activity systems. We saw the need for focusing on the concept of writing and contextualization in different subjects and school ecologies. And the intervention is thus characterized by a basic trust in experience, teachers' competence, a close cooperation with teachers, shared understanding of writing and assessment, an integration of concepts and resources in um, the local schools and a long-term intervention running for two years. And of course then a variety of data and analytic approaches. Then to the research design. How are our perspectives integrated and taken into the design? How did we proceed? After having developed an explicit understanding of writing that we have seen in this wheel of writing, we moved on to define norms of expected writing proficiency of the four and seven years of education. We did this by listening to experienced teachers' assessment of student texts and from that exploring constructing and reconstructing and re refining the expectations together with them. And the expectations uh, were sorted in seven assessment dimensions, that, like, like you see here, corresponding with our theoretical construct. In stage two of the intervention, uh, the teachers participated in a professional development program where they met the writing and assessment resources talked about and where they put the resources to use, adapted to their classes and subjects. They designed tasks based on the wheel of writing. The students wrote the texts in all subjects. The teachers assessed the texts by using the norms of expectation and Hattie and Timperley's approach to assessment. And it's important to underline that the teachers at the school collaborated closely on this. To sum up, the research group created a design 
while the teacher, through their planning, instruction and assessment, transform the intervention into practice with researchers as facilitators. This resulted in much work, much writing and assessment in altogether 24 schools, four of them were comparison schools, involving 500 teachers and 3,000 students, and we collected 50,000 student texts. The resources used in the intervention in this professional development program were the wheel of writing, here in another layout then, the norms of expectations, you're not going to read that, but this shows just one uh, assessment domain. Um, and we also developed some uh, booklets or books to use in the professional development program. And the resources from the form the basis for discussions among the teachers about assignment, instruction, assessment, and feedback. To be a little bit more specific, uh, the wheel of writing were much used when designing tasks. Here you see the notes from one teacher from a planning session. She sat with the national curriculum and the local plans for the subjects ahead of her. Uh, and then made plans together with his uh, or her colleagues on what kind of writing they were going to do in different subjects. And we see here, oh, I should be able to point, but at the bottom, in science, they decided to, to carry through an exploring writing activity um, and ended up with uh, an assignment, what do a plant need to survive? We'll come back to that. And in mathematics, on the next um, um, section, they decided that uh, they should uh, do a, a task, a writing task on uh, describing um, a mathematical um, a sign or how you calculate some mathematical um, task for a younger student. Just to give you some examples. The teachers also use the resources when giving feedback. Uh, here a uh, teacher says, can you use other words than maybe and I think and still show that you write exploring. And also in their uh, written response, you have managed to describe the bridges in such a way that they understand which ones you mean. That's good. So they use the, ex the, the concepts from the construct, exploring and describing. They assess the texts based on the norms and the domains of assessment, uh, like we have you have just met communication, content, text structure, and so on, using a five-graded scale, where three represented what it is reasonable to expect. Assessment on all these domains um, it gives a mastering profile, a summative uh, profile of the specific text, and shows strength and weaknesses in the text visualized as this, you could visualize it in other ways also, of course. And then the next step for the, for the teacher is, what will we highlight in the feedback to the student to help him further? Then, over to the data. This generated very much data. And uh, we collected pre and post data on students' writing and teachers' assessment that was on a representative sample. Writing assignments we collected, students' text, teachers' ratings, and formative assessment. And we also recorded assessment discussions. We made observations, some, and had interviews and collected contextual data. We made um, different types of analysis, both qualitative and quantitative, of data from these schools. 
I'm not going into the analysis, just showing you this. Uh, we have reported on this analysis in a number of articles, and so far two doctoral uh, theses, more are coming. Um, they are, you find them on our web website. I will give you the address at the end of my talk. Then over to main findings. Quantitative analysis revealed that the students altogether improved their writing competence considerable, considerably during the project period. The youngest uh, ones, the youngest children, profited most at some schools equivalent to one and a half year of extra education. The post data uh, collected five months after the intervention also indicate the sustainable effect. However, the analysis document a great variation among schools, among classes and individual students. Concerning teachers' assessment competence, analysis show a small improvement as to agreement among the teachers in rating of students' texts. The qualitative analysis of teachers' and assessment dialogues, however, add to the picture displaying a developing move from um, instrumental or more ritual approaches to gradually more flexible and hermeneutic ways of using the norms and the constructs. We'll come back to this in a little while. During the project period, the teachers reported and the te researchers also observed an increased awareness of how to see and assess texts. Focusing on the students, it's interesting that they altogether improved. But at the same time, we see this great variation. That is puzzling and interesting. And we found it necessary to take a closer look into what is going on in different ecologies to try to understand and explain this variation. So then I take you shortly into two uh, qualitative sub-studies to give you an impression on how we worked and on the findings. It's uh, one about teachers' assessment dialogues and then practices and cultures in two high-achieving schools. As already mentioned, we analyzed assessment dialogues, dialogues between experienced teachers in the middle and at the end of the norm project's two-year-long intervention. Through this study, we focused on the process behind the formative assessment. That's a stage that has got very little attention. The teachers have to form a nuanced pic picture of the text, do interpretative reading of it before they are able to choose what they will focus on in formative feedback. We found great variation here also, in the way the teachers use the norms of expectations. From instrumental use, where the teacher used the norms more like a checklist. Mm -mm, this text has got this, and this, and this, and this, and like this. To a more flexible use, anchoring their judgments in knowledge on writing, language, and texts. We found uh, most teachers, uh, however, uh, not on those two extreme points, but in between, and we have labeled that learning in progress. We see that the teachers learn from each other on the way while assessing. These communities of colleagues became good arenas for developing competence in text and assessment, and also developing their meter language. What we see in these conversations is a gradually empowering of the teachers when talking about and assessing texts. As one of the teachers said, now we have got uh, a language to use while assessing. Assume that assessment works. It is reasonable that this variation among teachers affect the quality of their writing education, and then reasonably, also the students' texts. 
This was the first sub-study. The second one, um, there we examined two schools with high achieving students and asked us what do they do there? What are their practices? What are the cultures? Um, the two schools had much in common in the way they worked with writing. And to sum up, both used the resources in a flexible and independent way, put much effort in designing writing tasks, and they involved the students to a large degree. First, we take a look into how the norms of expectations were used in a writing process in fourth grade. In Norwegian, uh, translated to English. Here was, it's an excerpt from a self-assessment sheet presented ahead of a task where the students were to write an exploring text, actually, what do a plant need to survive? And we recognize concepts and formulations from the norms of expectations. I would like to draw your attention to how they under the assessment domain use of language are emphasizing the conjunctions that may contribute to give a text an exploring character, like see things from both sides, object, underpin, conclude, which illustrates how the assessment criteria is adapted to the act of writing in use to explore. Okay, we're going to explore. And um, one of the teachers said, we pick the norms of expectation that fit best with the act of writing and change them when they do not fit well. Then another uh, example that illustrates use of the resources through planning and carrying out a writing process. To the right here, um, you see info uh, that was sent to us researchers by the teachers and show, it showed the assignment and the, what they, that they had planned and how they, they, had, um, yeah, how they planned to, to carry it through. Uh, through different stages. We see that the teachers here also relate very closely to the notion of writing and what they have learned about assessment. Here I will point especially to how they, uh, in preparing for writing, are involving the students. They want the students to join in on elaborating assessment criteria. So, involving, and I also, this doesn't make much meaning uh, to you, but it's, um, it, it, they also uh, stressed much, the, or focused much on dialogues with individual students. They went around in the classroom talking to each student, very shortly, but to look into each text, and they used the stool. Um, stool pedagogy, they actually called it, in a very effic e efficient way. So individual dialogues and also much oral dialogues. And also we see that um, the texts that the students should write, they were supposed to be used. It was a text about uh, um, inviting people to a cultural event. This is uh, su one such invitation, and it was sent home to the parents. Uh, the teachers put much effort um, in, this, in this planning stage, making the assignment as meaningful as possible for the students. In the high achieving um, classrooms, there is much dialogue and much sharing of ideas and texts involving the students to a large degree. Um, establishing, discussing, establishing shared understanding of the assignment and expectations like we have just seen. And uh, they used much oral feedback and interesting with the possibility of students to talk back, to disagree, to object, to ask questions, and thus stimulate uh, their own reading and text judgment. And 
they encourage students to assess their own texts, confer the self-assessment sheet. A student, uh, he said that when you have finished school, there is no teacher to guide you and to respond. And then it's nice to have criteria. They help you to see if there is something you have forgotten, help you to have control, he said. And here is also the voice of one of the teachers at this one of these high achieving schools. Through this way of working, we create ownership to the expectations, to the basis for assessment. We pull the students back into their texts and make them think and see. We make them responsible for their own writing, their own texts. And then at last, uh, uh, a few words about uh, the principal's uh, role at these two schools. Um, they displayed genuine interest and support in the project and they expected much from their teachers and they communicated it, that they expected much and also from the students and they took also care of practical organizations connected to this, this way of working. So they took the role of a professional leader uh, and they were they were, had an eye on building sustainable culture. So this was a um, very fast travel through this big and wild project. What did we actually learn from the project? Based on our experiences of promising findings, I would say, what does it take to develop competent student writers and professional writing teachers for the present and the future? What should premises for successful writing education be? What I go over to know now will in part be a, a summing up of experiences that we think, ha think have potential and some of my reflections, thoughts and also worries. It is hard to identify what will be the challenges in the future, as mentioned. We may create different scenarios about medias and new tools and so on, but we never know for sure what we will meet. What we know, however, is that we will need broad writing competency. I will argue that the best way to prepare teachers to help is to help them to establish a basis for flexibility and confidence in the field of writing. I think that um, basic and solid understanding of writing and assessment among teachers is the main clue. The teachers need an in-depth understanding of the concept of writing, of what writing actually is. That means, as we see it in the norm project though, to understand the dynamic interaction between purpose, acts of writing and semiotic mediation. Uh, our teachers had at the outset a rather narrow understanding of writing. They also need a well-developed understanding of uh, assessment, uh, both these two requirements here are premise or pre uh, depend on knowledge on language, text, and semiotic resources, including meta language. Rubrics and norms of e expectations may give good help, a place to seek support, but they always have to be used in a pragmatic way, adjusted to the actual situation and involving the writers. Feedback that is not well integrated in the writing process has a limited impact on the student's learning. That is shown in several studies. These are features that we find in the high achieving classroom that we have studied. We see that they give basis for adaptive, practicing adaptive expertise. Uh, and in my opinion, that is the best way to meet future challenges, whatever they might be. It deals with building teachers' competence, it deals with trust in their knowledge. But how to do this? 
how to bring about professional development that meets these basic conditions. Three components may be good guidelines. First of all, and most important, I think it's building strong professional communities on writing at schools based on a shared understanding and a shared language. We do not necessarily need to be based on exactly what I have presented here, of course. The point is to establish a conscious perspective on writing assessment uh, and writing development, and thus secure ongoing reflection and improvement through collegial discussions. And not at least to also secure adaption to new demands, new genres, resources in the future. We saw, and many others have seen, that school leaders hold a key position in motivating, in keeping the teachers on the track. And time is always an issue. They need time to develop knowledge and confidence. But as we saw in our project, it not necessarily takes a great amount of time, but it's focus and consciousness over time. One of the principals um, at, yeah, uh, um, at one of these high-achieving schools, he said before he went into the project, when entering a new engagement involvement like this writing project, we never think less than five years. Then on the student level, um, we will highlight uh, the value of different kinds of discussions and dialogues on text, topics, how to meet purposes, criteria, and so on. And not at least the value of opening up for students to talk back. This means involve them, make them responsible, lead the students back into their texts, and give them access to suitable terminology. Thus give place for self-monitoring and self-regulation. And also here, taking the long perspective, give the students possibility to build further on earlier writing experiences and responses, like we saw they did at the high achieving schools. So far, I have um, addressed how to meet challenges in writing instruction and assessment without taking into account guidelines on a more overarching policy level or to be more specific conditions generated from official school policies, beliefs in and demand on tests and measuring on ranking achievements. It is a real challenge for the nearest future, I think, this accelerating demand of measuring students' achievements all the time, of the issue of accountability. It represents a dilemma. I think it's important to be aware of that measuring instruments capture only fragments of students' writing competency. Writing is always situated and complex. And what may then be gained by testing and measuring, and what lost? As to gains, it gives a picture of essential parts of the student's writing competence, often in test situations. And it also gives basis for comparing and for planning of further teaching. On the other hand, it may put pressure on teachers on what to focus on in their writing education. What is measured and tested indicates what is value and is easily anticipated as and transformed to guidelines for their teaching as a form of hidden curriculum. It may also undermine teachers' adaptive expertise, their independence and creativity. It may also inspire to a writing education less guided by purpose, confer our functional writing construct. We know from research that measurement theory often overrides writing theory. Um, I don't know the pronoun.
friends, but Behiza, dare we say Norway and Engelhardt, they have done research on this and says that there is a conflict, a tension here. And reliability is not enough. Judgments have to be appropriate, meaningful and useful to cite uh, Lissam Lyons. It needs to be contextualized. During our research pro process, we have done both measurement studies and been focusing on formative assessment. We have, however, done more of qualitative analysis than we had planned to capture the complexity and variety. And that explains why our project has become so wild. What I have presented above, a conceptually based writing education, I will maintain is a good way to go. In short, measuring often implies narrowing down, while assessment for learning often means opening up. Bethan Marshall poses a basic question in her article from 2004 when she, relating to formative assessment, asks how we should understand the problematic nature of progression. She suggests that it may be better to understand progression as heading towards a horizon rather than a clearly defined goal. What does other research say? What I've chosen to focus on is overarching perspectives, because I think that is where we have to work to meet the challenges ahead of us in teacher education and in te teachers' professional development. This thinking finds support in research, among others, Appleby and Langer in 2013, who say that it is relatively easy for teachers to assimilate new techniques into their practice, but it is much more difficult to change the underlying epistemology that shapes teaching and learning, and such changes may be necessary for instruction to work well. And Baird and Hopfenbeck uh, and several others also underline in their uh, review, uh, larger re review report in 2014 that a more integrated approach to assessment and learning is required. And Behizade and Engelhardt also advocate a contextually based assessment of writing competence. Just to mention a few, there are many more, but um, that's all I take with me now here. We have much valuable research on writing that shows effective instruction methods. There is much to choose among for teachers. Many good techniques to make use of, many strategies to apply, but to make relevant choices and to make them work optimally, they have to be anchored or based in conscious understanding of writing and assessment because the teacher is the key. Mayhel, Lines and Jones, a newly published article, underpins this, finding that using text as models for writing may be very effective, but when, uh, whether that enables but whether that enables or constrains the students depends on the approach of the teachers, on their choices, on their contextualizations. As mentioned, there are many studies, many meta-studies showing writing instruction methods to be highly effective. Many of these studies can report on much higher reliability and more control on variables than the norm project. And they contribute with interesting findings. But they lose us out on complexity, on the agency and contextual elements, on the dynamics that constitutes writing. To capture the complexity in students' writing, that's the real challenge. When doing research on students, and also on teachers actually, we are studying moving targets, someone has said. These are methodological challenges that we have to take care of. 
As I guess you have understood, I will argue that there is a need for more qualitative and contextualized studies to draw a more nuanced and holistic picture, to contribute with additional insights to understand better variations in practice, all those whys we are left with. In the NOM project, we have tried to meet some of these challenges by doing a, using a combination of hermeneutic approach and psychometrics. And we have um, tried to use a different type of intervention um, and relied on this ecological uh, validity. We will underpin the importance of being aware of and explicit on theoretical and methodological basis that we anchor our research in. Um, Harmy and Wilkinson has done a review that was published uh, last year on research on early writing development. Um, it's a very interesting uh, review, and its point, uh, main point is that uh, there is a, a lack of explicit uh, defining of writing in many of the projects that they have um, looked into. I found that uh, interesting, and um, it just underpinned the necessity of saying what is writing. We have to to do that in our research. We also need to talk better um, across uh, the theoretical and methodolo methodological borders to make further progress in our understanding. We in the NORM project do not claim to have all the answers, but we have tried to meet some tricky challenges and we have, in all modesty, made promising findings and experiences. And we hope to contribute to a discussion relevant for both future research and practice, and not at least teacher education. I would like to close this uh, talk by giving the voice to one of our students. Uh, in the project. Uh, this is a text uh, written after the two years uh, uh, engagement in the NORM project. At this school they continued uh, in this way to work with writing. Many of the schools did that. Um, and the students, uh, it's Christiane, 13 years old, she writes about her writing experiences. Earlier, I got stressed and worried when I got to know that I should write a text because I did not know what I should write. Gradually, when we had uh, written several different texts, I started to understand how I should write. It is, for example, a completely different basic structure in a reflecting act of writing than in a convincing act of writing. You use also different words and, and construct sentences differently. When I now get to know that I'm going to write a new text, I feel much more confident on what to write and find it much more funny and easier to write. The big wall between the paper and the pencil has disappeared, Christiane says. Here is, by the way, um, the address to our publication, but if you just Google the NORM project, you will get into it. So, thank you for listening. Mm -hmm. So, thank you very much, Sinova, for a really rich insight into the NORMS project. And I think it was particularly good the way you teased out some of the tensions and challenges that exist between that, that practice and the research and the policy. And we're going to open that up now for questions from the audience. So, any questions for Sinova?
Thank you for the nice talk. I wondered if you distinguish between um, handwriting and writing on a machine, because there's a big discussion, at least in Switzerland, uh, about um, what is more important, what make, makes more a meter uh, recognition, and these things. Did you distinguish that? Um, we did not distinguish between it. Um, like I said, it was. Uh, we um, leaned on this ecological uh, thinking and uh, it was the teachers deciding which way the students should write, what fitted into the practice they had at school. So we, ha we got texts both uh, written on, um, on data uh, and we got handwritten texts, we got drawings into it, so very different uh, texts like the way it is in school today. But we have not been focusing, focusing uh, especially on the way they produce the text writing or with hand or typing. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's one behind. Thank you very much for your very inspiring talk. I was really uh, impressed also with the way you're engaging teachers in uh, uh, this dialogic intervention. And you said something about it being different uh, in a way from uh, the idea of Engström on formative interventions. Mm -hmm. Can you say something more about that? The ways it's different and yeah. maybe the same as well? <laughs> I could try to do that. Um, as I said, we are inspired by um, the basic thinking that uh, Engelström uh, has. Um, and we looked into his activity systems and uh, a long time ago I also tried to use that. It's very complex uh, and hard to use with the focus that we had because we wanted to focus on the writing and in, in this big activity system, writing or language, mediation, it is a part. But um, we wanted to foreground that much more than that activity systems um, seem to open up for. So we have the different, you can say, elements in the activity system with us as more contextual uh, information and then we have the, the writing and use of assessment and, and language in in the foreground. That was very um, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I guess uh, yeah. in a way in in the activity system you could also see that one of the uh, possible uh, goals or one of the possible outcomes that you have is writing. So it could be yeah. sort of uh, I think it's in many ways aligned actually. Um, oh, I didn't hear what you said. Sorry? Yeah, uh, could you just repeat the last thing you said? That it looks like it's very much aligned. Uh, yeah. Also that you're reporting on the role of the uh, director of the school, for example. Yeah, yeah. Which, yeah. yeah. And I had, uh, I had another question now that I have the microphone. <laughs> um, uh, can you say something about uh, the way uh, writing and... and um, um, speaking in a way and, and um, uh, reading are aligned in your work or in, in the schools? <laughs> oh, that was a big question. <laughs> um, we have not focused on um, um, reading um, connected to, to writing. We have not had that focus. We have decided to focus on writing but of course it deals with language it deals with using language and of course they read also um, to write texts yeah. they have to read the, the assignment so there is much reading but we are not focusing on that we are focused more on the way they use uh, talking and dialogues talking about texts students together teachers and students so uh, conversations around and about texts is very important uh, and also the, like I saw Ella showed you when the teachers were assessing texts it was we did conversation analysis to, to come close 
onto what um, they were doing. So in that way, um, dialogue, the oral part, is uh, has become more important than we had thought. And also, when the teachers um, um, gave feedback at those schools uh, with high achieving um, students, they used seemed to use or they used more of oral gradually more of oral feedback during the process. I said it's, it's a challenge when to give feedback, when to assess. And they kind of integrated in, in a very good way, talking about the um, um, expectations, the criteria in the beginning, and then keeping that warm all the way through. Not with stopping up and talking, saying, no, we're going to talk about it, just by reminding the students, using the word, using the criteria. So we, the oral part, we have got a rather large place. Yeah. Mm. Thank was you. that yeah. okay yeah, answer? Yeah, that's a good answer, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Any more questions? Thank you, Sinova. <coughs> um, I have to say this has been something of um, an unusual early experience, mm. this particular conference. Um, it started on the very first day of the conference, and I think you were there, with that session on policy and research, which was, I think, um, well, quite controversial, I think. And now here, in what for me will be one of the last sessions of the conference, you were saying um, it's easy to change strategy but it isn't easy to change epistemology. So our research can sometimes have these momentary impact that comes and goes, but making change at a, an epistemological level is really difficult. But what you were talking about was the intention to be dialogic, to bring research and teachers together in a very authentic way. So I just wondered if you'd reflect in a post hoc way <laughs> on how successful you think that was and, and whether you'd recommend it as a model for the rest of us. Oh, actually, I don't remember what uh, the early conference you were talking about. And we, we were oh, on the, the very first session was a policy and research. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. no, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see. And uh, and what question? What your question is? I was just asking that in, with that intention to be dialogic between practice yeah. and research. Yeah. Um, what your reflections are on having attempted to do it, and whether you'd recommend it. <laughs> I guess I, uh, the way I've been talking, um, the answer is, of course, I would recommend it. Um, actually, I think uh, that's the way we we have to go to to manage to create change. This close cooperation between practice and research and. Uh, um, engaging the teachers because um, the teacher is the key person but of course there will be s policy much on the policy level and you talked about it at uh, this openings uh, panel um, it's it, it, it can maybe be contradicting so I think also it's important to work uh, towards the politicians and uh, but that is is hard work because suddenly there comes uh, something from from the policy level that is not found founded in uh, in research at all like we have now in Norway uh, it's said that every child um, that is kind of left behind he should get special help. But how do we find the child that's left behind when he starts in first grade? Because then it's supposed to, yeah. But that also um, um, was the reason why we got new money for a new big project, because we said we would like to find out uh, what does it mean to be left behind. But actually, I think it's it's really hard to, to go on on that, but you could use it to 
to get money and to to establish more knowledge on the youngest writer writers but uh, actually I think the teacher is the key but we should not at all um, stop to engage ourselves in policy on a higher level and that is uh, it's hard to foresee how to do it because it's changing we are going to have election in Norway now and uh, suddenly there are p other people you have to to relate to but working with the teachers on a longitudinal basis and working with teacher education I think that is where we can can gain most. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh. Um, thank you very much for your talk. I really enjoy it. Um, I'm just particularly interested in um, what have you found about um, self-monitoring and self-regulation um, in your writing research? Mm -hmm. Mm. I don't know if you have much to, to, I know you are working with that, that is your focus. Um, actually we didn't have that as a part of our design, but when we went into the schools and when we worked with the teachers and with the norms of expectations, we saw that that was just so important. So we, we have just um, studied it on a qualitative basis it's not just but it, it's uh, that's what we have done and we have not published anything yet on that we're actually working on a, a book now that uh, we will publish in Norwegian because we want to reach the teachers and teacher educators and there we will uh, do some more on that mm. thank, you. Mm. thank you any others well, I think all that remains then is for me to thank you so much for talking to us. And uh, here's a little gift from early for you, a, a memory of Aachen. I think. Oh, so thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. And thank you for listening.